but when the American military puts something on, everybody gets invited. And the censorship for the USO and the Department of Defense is just unbelievable. They want a typewritten sheet of every joke, and you submit it to them, and it comes back with the joke they approve. The first set of paper I gave them had uh, 20 jokes on it, I got four jokes back. I had to give them another set of 20, I got four back. The third one, I got about half of it back. But that's working for the government. Right? We're not allowed to say one word about the president overseas because so many people think it's a negative spot that they don't want, and they've had people come over. Now, Bob Hope can say whatever he wants to, but I'm Lou Dak and I had to do what they said. Now, doing that made me open to the rest of my career when I'd show up in a new town and I'd have a new headliner to work with and he'd come over to me after the first show and say, don't do any cat jokes. Why? I have cat jokes. So, I'm the headliner. Well, if I like the guy, I'll take the cat jokes out. If I don't like the guy, I'll tell him I wish him the best. And if he can't follow my cat jokes, maybe I should have his job. <laughs> In the end, one of the things that makes you matchable to a headliner to go out on tour and get repeated dates off of his approval, not yours, is you got to make sure your act does not conflict with the headliner. So the first headliner I ever went out with was from the Comedy Store. He's the guy that hired me at the Comedy Store, and he was filthy as hell. So it was very easy to work my clean stuff in front of him and represent a broad spectrum of comedy. Me being clean, me being dirty. And then when I'd come up with a dirty joke, he'd buy it from me and I couldn't do it anymore. But it, it, it left me with the skill of being able to write dirty but not use it. And then, geez, I've been in a hundred situations where these people are going to kill me and burn me unless I make them laugh and I will do anything it takes.